Hello all. Today we will be uh, covering topics related to endorsement in negotiable instrument chapter. So before moving to the endorsement concept, uh, let me have a quick recap on negotiable instrument. The word negotiable is nothing but transferable by delivery and instrument is nothing but the written document by which a right is created in favor of some person. Thus, the term negotiable instrument literally means a written document transferable by nature or transferable by delivery. Coming to the definition part of the negotiable instrument, according to section 13 subsection 1 of Negotiable Instrument Act of 1881, negotiable instrument means a promissory note, bills of exchange or a check which is payable either to order or to a bearer. Bearer here is the holder of the instrument. So next there are different kinds of negotiable instrument, promissory notes, bills of exchange and a check. According to statute, that is according to the law, there are three mainly we will be concentrating three kinds of negotiable instrument in this chapter that is promissory note, bills of exchange and a check. Let me have a definition part of promissory note. Promissory note as per section 4 of uh, a negotiable instrument act of 1881 the promissory note defines as an instrument in writing so either it can be a bank note or a currency note containing an unconditional undertaking which is signed by the maker to pay certain sum of money to or to the order of the certain person or to the bearer of the instrument. In this promissory note, uh, it involves two kind of a person. One is the maker and one more is the pay. The maker who draws the bill, who draws the promissory, who draws the promissory note and promises to pay to the pay is called as a maker. The person to whom the payment is to be made is called as a pay. Bills of exchange, according to section 5 of Negotiable Instrument Act of 1881, a bills of exchange is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional order signed by the maker directing a certain person to pay certain sum of money only to or to the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument. In the promissory note, it uh, it was an unconditional undertaking or an unconditional promise which had made by the maker. A maker there, he was a customer who was who was making a promise, unconditional promise. Here in the bills of exchange, the maker will be the seller who is ordering the customer to pay certain sum of money. He is directing to pay certain sum of money or to order or to the bearer of the instrument. So in the check according to section 6 of in the Negotiable Instrument Act of 1881, a check is a bills of exchange, it's nothing but a bills of exchange drawn on a specif specified banker and not expressed to be payable otherwise than on demand. So there are two kinds of uh, additional qualification that are required in a check. One is it always drawn on a specified banker. If a person holds a check, he can't go and ask to the third party. He only has to draw, he has to draw on a specified banker. It next one is it always payable on demand. It should be always paid or uh, payable on demand. Uh ask once once uh, once of all, specified go to a specified banker and you have to demand for your money. That is about the check. So moving on to the important concept of uh, this particular chapter that is endorsement. Uh, the word endorsement, a simple term where we can explain the endorsement is something which is written on the back or front of the instrument that is the promissory note, bills of exchange or the check is called as an endorsement. So let me have a meaning of the endorsement now. Endorsement means signing one's 
name on the back of the negotiable instrument it can be in bills of exchange promissory note or a check with a view to transfer the right property or the title in the instrument to another person so in a legal term which means signing of the instrument that allows the legal transfer of the negotiable instrument from one person to another or the institution as well coming to the definition endorsement has been defined in section 15 of negotiable instrument act of 1881 as where the maker or holder of negotiable instrument signs the same otherwise that as such maker for the purpose of the negotiation on the back or face thereof or on a slip of paper annexed thereto he is said to endorse the same is called the endorser so uh, let me explain you this definition then we we'll start with the parties who are involved in endorsement process let me uh, explain you through an example let's say there is a bookseller uh name is umesh sells a book worth rupees 10000 rupees to amit who is a buyer so amit don't have uh, don't have the cash and uh, hence he takes the book on credit for the legal security yeah he'll give the book to amit on a credit basis for the legal security amit draws a bill having an unconditional order saying that this fellow has to give 10000 rupees after 3 months here umesh has two options with him the first option is he can hold the bill for 3 months and get the payment after maturity period from amit second option is he can use this instrument for meeting his business transaction in this situation if umesh requires money uh, if he requires immediate cash requirement after one month during this 3 uh, months duration he can borrow some money from another person uh the other another person name may be pratik for the period of 2 months so hence he will pass on the instrument to pratik while doing so umesh has to write on the back of the instrument by giving the proper instruction to amit that he has to pay that the amit has to pay money to pratik and he has to put his signature who umesh has to put his signature and he have to give a proper instruction to amit saying that he has to pay this sum of money to pratik now pratik is the owner of the instrument and he can claim the money from amit after the due date this signing of the document and transferring it to some other person or some institution is called as endorsement now pratik can pass on the document or instrument to some other person by signing on the back of the document this process of passing or transferring may go on and on till the final payment is made while passing this document umesh can sign on the back or it face or he can sign in a slip of a paper and attach it to the document therefore it is said in the definition that negotiation can be done either by signing on the back or face or in a slip of a paper attached to it so the next concept is parties who are involved in the endorsement process there are two parties who are involved in the endorsement the first party is the endorser the 
the endorser is the person who signs the document and transfer to some other person is called as the endorser which means the transferer of the instrument in this before example the previous example what had uh, given you in that example umesh was the endorser who signs the document and transfer to other person a second party will be the endorsee the person on whose name the instrument is endorsed that person called as endorsee in the previous example amit uh, sorry pratik was the endorsee the person on whose the name the name of the instrument is endorsed so he has wrote that amit has to give the payment to pratik so pratik who is receiving the payment so the instrument who is the person uh, on whose name the instrument is endorsed that person name is called as endorsee so next the legal uh, term which are which are used in banking sector that is allot if the back of the instrument is filled by endorsement the holder in order to provide the space for any further endorsement may tag or paste or attest at sorry or att attested a piece of paper called a lodge a lodge is nothing but it is a paper attached to an instrument to provide a space for additional endorsement if there is no space available in the instrument then we can attach it the original instrument and we can go for the additional endorsement those uh, kind of a process is called as a launch so next one the essentials of a valid endorsement what are the essentials or the elements which are included in the endorsement while in the process of endorsement the first one is it must be a written instrument it should be uh, signed okay on the back of the instrument or the face or in a slip of paper it should be in a written form okay that is what it is said that it should be a written instrument the so next one is must be prepared by holder or a maker but not a stranger yes endorsement is essentially made by the maker or a holder of the instrument but a stranger cannot endorse it that is true very much true a third party will not come into the picture who cannot do this kind of an endorsement process only a maker or the holder of the instrument has the right to prepare to write a endorsement to sign on a endorsement next one signed by the endorser it must be signed by the endorser when full name is not essential initial may also sufficient for it if illiterate person is making an endorsement then uh, thumb impression should be attested as i mentioned earlier signature can be made at any part of the instrument back on the instrument uh, uh, back of the instrument or on the face or uh, in a slip of paper rubber stamp is not accepted but after the signature of the endorser if the endorser wants to write his designation designation then a rubber stamp can be used so next is entire bill must be transferred by a partial but not a partial see when you are doing this kind of an endorsement process it should be full endorsement so all the uh, i mean whatever the amount which is mentioned in the bill or in any kind of a negotiable instrument it should be full endorsement not the partial endorsement the so next one negotiable uh, endorsement does not contain any specific form but intention to transfer must be present yes there is no such specific form for endorsement so there is no uh, such rules and regulation that is to be maintained in the process of endorsement 
but the intention should be specified that is there should be a transfer so that is uh, that is one of the essentials of a valid endorsement next one in a bill or note payable to order if the name of the endorsee is wrongly spelled see in a bills of exchange or any kind of negotiable instrument or to order if the name of the endorsee is wrongly spelled then then the endorsee when he wants to do further endorsement uh he has to sign his name as spelled in the instrument earlier and write the correct spelling within the bracket after his endorsement so that is what it is said if it is wrongly spelled you have to do it like this so next one it should be in the form of ordinary signature so whatever the um ordinary signature of the endorser is there that has to be done um then suffix or a prefix should be avoided like mr mrs miss shri or doctor should be avoided a uh, normal ordinary signature of a pay or a endorsee is is avoided uh, sorry it is been done it is accepted next is a title of the honor should be omitted from the endorsement that is padma bhushana padma shri dada saheb etc so title whatever the title which is being received by the endorser should be omitted should not be uh, written in the back of the instrument or in the face or it might be a slip of paper it should be omitted next one the kinds of endorsement the kinds of endorsement so there are different kinds of endorsement blank or general endorsement a second one special or uh, full endorsement partial endorsement restrictive endorsement forged endorsement in the forged endorsement we have uh, some kind of material alteration and uh, conditional endorsement conditional endorsement is also called as uh, qualified qualified endorsement so in the qualified or a conditional endorsement we have three different kinds of endorsement sans recourse endorsement facultative endorsement sans price endorsement so moving on to the explanation of different kinds of endorsement the first and the foremost first and the foremost type of endorsement is blank endorsement blank endorsement is also called as general endorsement if the endorser signs his name only the endorsement is said to be blank an endorsement is blank as it is general called as general endorsement specifies no endorsee name and as such the instrument becomes payable to the bearer i just explain you what is a blank or a general endorsement the endorser puts his signature on the back or the face of the instrument without mentioning the name of any specified person he never mention the uh, endorsee name in whose favor the endorsement has been made here it is mere endorsement that is uh, it is said to be this kind of endorsement is said to be blank and which contains no endorsee name so the instrument is paid to a bearer and consequently it can be negotiated or transferred by mere delivery it does not does not have a limit negotiability the next one is full endorsement a special endorsement so a uh, full endorsement is also called as a special endorsement here it is an endorsement in which the endorser writes not only his name but also name of the person to whom the instrument is endorsed it can be further negotiated only the endorsee named in the instrument so in the blank endorsement there was no endorsee name specified but in full endorsement or special endorsement 
endorse the uh, the signature of endorser as well as endorsing name will be specified and it can be further negotiate negotiated only by the endorsee named in the instrument the party who is mentioned the per person name which which are mentioned in the instrument that is the endorsee he can have the right to have a transfer a transformation of that kind of negotiable instrument many a time that person has the right the next one will be partial endorsement if only a part of the amount of instrument is endorsed it is called as partial endorsement a purpose of transfer to endorsee a part only of the amount payable on the instrument such instrument does not have any further negotiation and it is being considered as invalid uh, endorsement why because let's say a is the holder of a bill rupees 1000 he endorses it by paying to b or to order rupees 500 this is a partial endorsement and it is invalid for the purpose of negotiation so in the bill it has been written as 1000 so he endorses it to b saying that you have to uh, pay me only 500 you have to pay mm, the third party only 500 rupees so that is invalid if you want to do the endorsement or transformation uh, transferring the document then you have to go for the full endorsement or a special endorsement if it is done in the partial then it is called as a partial endorsement this is with respect to amount next one restrictive endorsement a restrictive endorsement is one which limits the further negotiation of the instrument the endorsee is in such cases cannot further endorse it Gen uh, generally the word only is added after the endorsee's name he cannot further endorse it to anybody so the endorsement of the instrument contain uh, contain certain terms making it restrictive the endorser restrict the further negotiation of the instrument telling that you can't uh, go for the negotiation so this is what the condition it is said by endorse before endorsement the endorse so this kind of a restriction which is being put by the endorser to the endorsee those kind of an endorsement is called as restrictive endorsement the next is conditional endorsement the endorsement may be given with certain condition which should have been fulfilled by the endorse for obtaining payment the endorsee's right to receive money is subject to the fulfillment of a particular event so condition conditional endorsement is also called as qualified endorsement as i said you earlier a uh, restrictive endorsement is different conditional endorsement is different an endorsement where the endorser limits or neg uh, neg negatives his liability by putting some condition in the instrument so a conditional endorsement will not hold any kind of a condition with respect to restricting for the negotiation of the instrument he can't put a condition saying that you can't go for the negotiation so Uh, putting the condition based on the negotiation that is called as a restrictive. But condition, what kind of a condition may be uh, fulfilled by the uh, endorsee here? So it might be related to different kind of uh, conditional endorsement can be dealt. So let's say an example: pay to A on completion of house building to Ram. So he is telling that. Uh, the endorser is telling to um, uh, the endorser is telling to en endorse sorry the endorser is telling that he need to he will be getting the amount only after completing the house building once you have done with the house building you will get the amount back so that is what somewhat uh, he is putting the condition on a instrument and next one is pay to y if he marries x within a month so if uh, if he wants the money back okay he want to marry 
x within a month. Only after marrying x, he'll be getting a sum of money. So that is what the conditional endorsement. He, uh, uh, the endorsee wants to uh, should fulfill the condition that is being put by endorser here. So there are different kinds of uh, conditional endorsement or uh, qualified endorsement. Sans recourse endorsement. If the endorser does not want to incur any liability in the event of the instrument being dishonored, he may do so by writing the word sans recourse or without the recourse to me. After the endorsement, these, word, these words will exclude the liability of the endorsers altogether. Uh, let's say an example. The holder of a bill, the holder of a bill, Ravi, endorses by writing telling that i mean in the bills of exchange he'll write that pay rahul order at his own risk so ravi's signature will be there and he has written that you have to pay rahul or order at his own risk he is not taking any kind of i mean to say the endorser is just discharged with his liability He'll not take a, uh, he'll not take any kind of a liability with him. So he's telling that he has to pay or order at his own risk, that is endorsee risk. So I'll not be having any kind of liability. I'm discharged with the liability. He has to write that sentence by signing it on the back or the face of the uh, face of the instrument. The next kind of an endorsement is facultative endorsement so facultative endorsement uh, where the endorser waives or surrenders his right to receive the notice of dishonor by writing the words notice of dishonor waived after writing the name of the endorser so here an endorsement where the endorser extends his liability or abandons some right under negotiable instrument Let's say in a bills of exchange or a promissory note, he'll tell that he'll um, extend his liability, telling that pay or order or notice of this owner waived. So this kind of a uh, writing or extending the liability is called as facultative endorsement. So uh, next kind of a uh, conditional endorsement is sans. Uh, price endorsement. Sand price means without expenses. Here the endorser does not want any expenses to be incurred on this account on the instrument. He does not want any additional expenditure that has to be that has to be paid by the endorsee. So endorser does not want the endorsee to incur the expenses on his account of the instrument. So he only bears the expenses that is the endorser will be making all the expenses uh, while in the process of endorsement. So those kind of an endorsement is called as sans price endorsement. The so next one is a sixth kind of endorsement is forged endorsement. It refers to an endorsement where in the endorser signature is forged. It will not confer a valid title to the uh, endorsee or transferee even, even if he is holding in due course. So if the signature of the maker or a drawer or an acceptor is forged on a negotiable instrument, it is termed as forged instrument or a forged en endorsement. So in the uh, forged instrument has no existence in law. So there, uh, there are different kinds of material alteration can be done by many of the parties who are involved in this negotiable instrument. So either it might be an endorsement or the negotiable instrument, uh, the parties will be having an intention of defrauding others, either by forgery, in signature or by other means. So those kind of material alterations is being dealt in endorsement. So, coming to the definition, section 85 of section 1 of Negotiable Instrument Act, Act of 1881, any alteration in the original state of check 
such as date, amount, place name, changing the word, order to bearer, appearing after place name or in the endorsement. So those kind of an alteration is called as material alteration. They are altering all the signature here. They are uh, altering some few uh, essentials, essential requirement which is specified in the negotiable instrument or in the endorsement. So those kind of an alteration are said to be material alteration. So altering in an original uh, negotiable instrument is called as material alteration. So moving on to the next concept of endorsement that is legal effects of endorsement. So first legal effect that is uh, the endorsement of the check or a bills of exchange has varied significance. It has following legal effect here. The first one is to transfer the property in negotiable instrument. To transfer the property in the instrument from endorser to endorser, you can transfer. Like if you have this kind of a trans uh, transferability, it is only with the legal effect of endorsement you can do this. That kind of a right is available to the endorser. Second one, right to sue the acceptors of the bills for recovering the amount due. So let's say a uh, right to sue on the instrument on in his own name against all the party. If the uh, if uh, if the endorsee uh, didn't receive his amount from third party, once he's getting uh, to which he's getting the amount, if he's not getting his, if he's not recovering the amount back, then he can sue the party in the court of law. So that kind of a right is given in the endorsement. The endorsement is something like a proof. And next one, right to recover from the same uh, from the party. The same uh, point is being explained here. Right to recover from the party. See if, if n number of endorsements is on the process where uh, the transferability has been done, uh, are on and on. So it shows that uh, to whom it has been endorsed. Again, the further transformation is being endorsed, and if that party is not paying the amount, that can be recovered, recovered through the legal effect. He can sue in a court of law, saying that this party he has endorsed it, but this uh, the same party has not given my amount. So and so. So in case transfer, legal rights also applicable. So if you are transferring some um, you know the legal document uh, to some other person legal right is also applicable when it comes to endorsement so let's say uh, i'll just give you an example for this transferring the legal right uh, which are applicable a property which are which has owned by the person a property which has owned by the person uh, i i need to transfer the property to some other person okay i where i can uh, have this kind of an endorsement in the legal rights what i'll do before transferring i'll go to some uh, development authority i mean development officer i'll, I'll just tell him that i need to go for the endorsement i need to transfer my uh, property to uh, some other person so what he'll do he'll uh, get all the legal uh, requirements whatever the legal requirement is that he'll get he'll get that after the legal requirement is fulfilled then uh, endorser should write should sign on the back of the instrument or on the page or whatever the annexed uh, copy which has which has attached to the original uh, instrument after that it will be directly transferred to endorser so whatever the legal requirement is there that is also applicable in the endorsement so this is done uh, the concept of endorsement is done so thank you thank you for watching it